Well, what's up guys, um, uh, hopefully you're doing well, so, uh, why well, do an interesting video today, so, well, I've been looking at some of these, um, family vlogging channels, right, and I know I've done a lot of videos, um, you know, warning out the in them, criticising them, but there's one thing that has really become very clear, I guess, I think the thing that's become so clear these days is that there is no, there is there are no two parents who are more controversial than Anna and Jonathan's only Jovi. To me, I actually think Anna and Jonathan are worse than the Inums. I mean, you know, at least yeah. You know, I mean, I I, I you know I I well, the Inums out a hell of a lot, but at least Chris and Sarah can say that they're not putting their heads out online in the way that Jonathan does. You know, which is, you know, a big point there and there, a big point right there. You know, it's just crazy, to be honest. You know, I think the good thing is, and this is, you know, something that does make me happy, is that I know I'm not the only one who, you know, despises both Jonathan and Anna, you know, and, and know that they shouldn't be allowed to keep getting away with... You know, exploiting it his and just using it his for money. You know, I don't, I honestly don't get how people can't see that Jonathan and Anna are just using it his for money's, you know, for money's views and content, which is exactly what they are doing. You know, and people need to wake up and start realising that. You know, the sooner the better, I say. It's just crazy that people can't see what they're doing. You know, it's like, there, there, there's no words to describe stupidity, you know, to describe how stupid some people are these days. And some people are very stupid, that much is very blatant, it's, you know, very blatantly obvious. You know, all I'm saying is, or what I'm trying to say is that people should not be defending Jonathan for exploiting his kids. At the end of the day, you know, uh, this is what I, this is the point I made in the video I, in, in the video I put out yesterday. I said that when people are defending Jonathan and Anna, what people don't realise is that when they're defending Jonathan and Anna, they are basically enabling them to continue doing what they're doing. They're basically enabling them to continue exploiting their kids. And using it his for money. And there was nothing good about that. There was nothing of hey, or acceptable about that. You know, it's a point that has to be made. You know, it, it's just madness like really is just ma like pure madness i mean you know it, it, it's it's a difficult one it is a difficult one with them because I mean, it's just, I have, there's no words to describe how, you know, angry and frustrated I really am at this point. Um, you know, when it comes to people that are defending these family vloggers when they're basically just exploiting it, it's for money. You know, I honestly don't get how people can't see that, you know. Um, it's just ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. That people are uh, people can't see what they're doing, you know, and think that it's okay for them to be doing what they're doing. You know, no decent person would ever defend them over something like that. No decent person would say that, you know, what they're doing is okay and is acceptable, if you know what I mean. You know, it's just like. 
Uh, as I said, you know, you know, I've been watching videos recently. You know, I've started to realise that Jonathan and Anna are a hell of a lot worse than Chris and Sarah. You know, I know I criticise Chris and Sarah a lot, but to be fair, uh, to be fair to them, at least, you know, to be fair to them, they're not as bad, you know, they're not as actually, they're not, they're, they're, they're actually not as, not as bad as Jonathan and Anna are. I don't think there is anyone that's as bad as them. I mean, the only decent thing I can actually say about Jonathan and Anna in particular, Jonathan and Anna, to be honest, is that at least they're not focusing so much on Edie being trans now, like that's one good thing at least. So obviously, I you know, Jonathan, like Jonathan and Anna used to be, you know, focusing on that quite a lot, you know, they were, uh, you know, that was like, oh, they always used to, they always used to sing to be a very big focus point for a lot of the videos that Jonathan did on his channel. It felt like a lot of the videos that he was posting always seemed to revolve around ED being trans, you know, and th those videos were always quite controversial, you know, there was always a lot of, you know, Bitcoin in comments there as people, you know, you had some people saying, oh, you know, it is, you know, it is, it is trans, and other people were saying, oh, it is not trans, and, you know, it just caused a lot of grief, you know, and I think at the end of the day, I think, that, you know, maybe they've started to realise that people don't really give a crap anymore about the fact their child is trans, like, people don't really care about it anymore, you know. I think these days, I think, you know, when it comes to sit home and journeys, you know, people are so over the whole trans child thing, it's unbelievable. Like, no one cares about that anymore. No one gives a damn about that anymore, you know. And I'm just glad, you know, you know I'm so, so glad, in fact, that Jonathan and Anna are not focusing on it as much as they used to be focusing on it. You know, that's the only decent thing I can actually say for them. Is that at least they're not focusing so much on the fact that you're just trans. You know, at least, that, at least that's not really the focus point now. You know, at least they've sort of turned their focus away from that. But when you look at the content, it seems like Jonathan has gone down a completely different route. You know, he it he, he feels like he's always trying to make his, his look older, you know, he's trying to, you know, it feels like he's gone down that route where he's trying to, you know, trying to make his kids a target for creeps and child predators every day, you know, he's sexualising his kids, etc, etc, you know, like... Yeah, you know, I just feel like, you know, that uh, Jonathan's content used to be a lot less controversial before, but now it feels so much more controversial. Like, I don't mean to sound horrible here, or sound like I'm trying to cause offence, but Jonathan is just an absolute nightmare. He's the worst, definitely the worst out of the two of them, but Anna is just as bad for the fact that she's constantly defending them, like, she's constantly, you know, she's, like, the fact that she seems so okay with a lot of the things that Jonathan does, you know, that makes things even worse, the fact that John, you know, I mean, yeah, it's bad enough that Jonathan does the things that he does, but the fact that, jo uh, but the fact that Anna is so okay with a lot of the things that he does, makes the gravity of the situation a whole lot worse. You know, it makes the situation worse than it ever needed to be. You know, I... When I look at Jonathan and Anna, I honestly can't understand how anybody in their right mind would ever defend people like them and all they're doing is exploiting and abusing their hits. I mean, that's all we've seen here is... 
you know, it, you know, is you know, Jonathan is exploiting, abusing, rooming, manipulating his head. And I will say that, you know, I will say that, you know, purely because it's true. I either feel sorry for Alessia and Andrea because they're too young to really, you know, understand that their parents are just exploiting them for money, you know, and they're just using them for, you know, for money and views, you know, using them for content, you know. And this is the saddest thing about it is that kids are not really old enough to understand that their parents are, you know, that their parents, their parents are exploiting them and abusing them, grooming them, you know, manipulating them in so many ways. You know, they're too they're too young to really understand what their parents are actually doing to them. You know, they're too they're too young to really realise the damage that their parents are actually doing. You know and this is the problem here. You know it's just horrible to see people defending parents like Anna and Jonathan when all they're doing is exploiting and abusing their kids every single damn day. And I don't get how anybody how people can't see that. You know, I guess that some people are too stupid to be able to see that. You know, it's as simple as that. Uh, but that's what I really need to, to, to say this morning, you know, just give my thoughts on that. Um, you know, as I said, I'm just, you know, loud, I'm, kind of, I'm just kind of mad in a way that Jonathan and Anna are not focusing so much on ED being trans. Because I was like, you know, I used to get quite fed up with the way that they were focusing so much on that, you know, I did think it was a bit, you know, you know, it was a bit ridiculous when, you know, the amount of videos that Jonathan had posted on his channel about ED being trans, like there's, there's over, you know, there's hundreds of videos on his channel that revolve around ED being trans. That alone shows just how badly he's exploited it. I feel like he's exploited the whole trans child stuff way worse than Anna has, to be fairly honest. You know, that that and that alone, right? I don't... I mean, yeah, I don't have a problem with really being trans if he's trans. But I really, I don't agree with the way that Jonathan and Anna, you know, shit me, uh, have exploited that and used that for content. At the end of the day... It should have been Edie's story to tell when she was ready to tell that story, you know. When she, it should have been her journey to share when she was ready to share that journey with the world. But, you know, it was never Anna and Jonathan's story to share. It was Edie's story to share when she felt that the time was right. You know, the way that they shared it, it should never have been shared online. You know, it shouldn't have been shared online until ED was fully ready for it to be shared online and for it to be made, you know, and for the you know, for people to know about it and for people to be, you know, and for people to be, you know, for it to be made, you know, and for, and for you know, until she was ready for that to be made public. But it feels like Jonathan and Anna never really kind of stopped to think about how Edie, Edie, might feel, Edie might feel about that being shared online. You know, it feels like they never really stopped to ask her if she was actually okay with it being shared online or if she was ready for it to be shared online. You know, as I said, it should have been hers. You know, I don't have a problem with her being trans. You know, I just don't agree with the way it was shared online. You know, I just feel like it should have been Edie's story. It was Edie's story to share online and to share when she felt that they felt that the time was right for her to do that. I mean she felt that she was fully ready to do that. You know it, it's just wrong the way that Jonathan and Anna have exploited that over the past few years. You know and the damage that you know and the damage they've actually done with this, you know, with the way they've exploited it. It's just wrong on so many levels. You know, the way that they've you know, shared that online, it, it, that was one of the many things that 
it should have been kept private until the, until the child in question was actually ready for it to be shared online. You know, it should never have been brought, uh, shared and brought harshly online the way it was. You know, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I know that probably sounds a bit harsh, but, you know, I just feel like it should have been Edie's story to tell when she felt she was ready, that she was ready to do that. I mean, she felt that she was ready to share that. You know, it should have been her journey to share when she felt that she was ready to share that journey with people, you know, with, you know, with people and, you know, when she was ready for that to be public knowledge. You know, that's all I'm going to say on it. You know, I've always said I don't have a problem with Edie being trans. I just don't agree with the way that Jonathan and Anna have both exploited it. I think the way that they have both exploited it is absolutely appalling and disgusting. And people, it's not, you know, people will say, oh, they haven't been exploiting it and things like that. But they have both, you know, been exploiting it. And they both, you know, and they both exploited it so damn bad. You know, you can't help for uh, you know, but feel sorry for you, the fact that they've exploited this, you know, exploited their journey and made, you know, and basically shared it online. And it seemed like they never stopped to think that, you know, to, uh, uh, to, to stop to think about how she would feel about them sharing it online. You know, I feel like, you know, it's, it's, you know there's just no words. You know, when I, it's, it's, it's when I think about things like that that make me so damn angry when I think about the way they've exploited, you know, things like that, you know, and it's, when I think about the fact that they've exploited their child in that way, you know. But it, it just, you know, as I said, it, I, I, it's never felt like ED was genuinely trapped. You know, it does feel like... You know, Anna and Jonathan had a big part to play in her decision. They had a bigger role in it, you know. I feel like Jonathan had more of an influence in it than anyone else. You know, I don't think that can ever be ruled out. Of course, Jonathan, you know, and Anna will say, oh, well, we never forced it on ED, you know, it's her decision. But they're always going to say that. It's not like they're going to come on camera and admit that they, that they did actually have a lot of influence in ED's decision to be her child and that they did force it on her. They're never going to admit that, even if they had that, even if they, even if they did force her to do it, they would never admit to that. They would always deny it and say they never forced it upon her. You know, it's it's just the way it has the way it is. You know, it's just you know, when I look at Edie, I just it just feels like she doesn't fully understand what being trans is or what it really means. You know, because being trans is a big deal. You know, and does ED really fully understand what it means and what it is? You know, it's just. Uh, it just feels like Jonathan and Anna have never really fully explained that to her. Like, they've never really fully explained to her what being trans is and what being trans really means. You know, that's all I'm saying. But I hope you've enjoyed this video anyway, and I'll see you for another one soon. End of. Bye-bye.